or you ain't doing nothing with making sense when you read the Bible. Like they want to see you mess up or either you don't read this to them at all or if you're reading it, you're messing up and you don't know what you're saying and they making a better point than you and then that would make them happy. But it's like just like the devil just telling them, don't listen to this. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Even though they know it makes sense, mm -hmm. they still deny it. Yes, 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 yes. And we could go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 to 12. That's Revelation 11, verse 1 to 12. Verse 1, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. And she being with child cried. No. Verse 2. Oh, chapter 11. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city. Shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Verse 9. And there the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to put in graves. And they shall dwell upon the earth, and they sh that shall dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on, on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which they saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Um, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. The atheistical power that ruled in France during the revolution and, reign, and the reign of terror did wage such a war against God and his holy word as the world had never witnessed. The worship of the deity was abolished by the national assemblies. Bibles were collected and publicly burned with every possible manifestation of scorn. The law of God was trampled underfoot. The institutions of the Bible were abolished. The weekly rest day was set aside, and in its stead, every tenth day was devoted to revealing and blasphemy. Wow. Baptism and the communion were prohibited, and announcements posted conspicuously over the burial places declared death to be an eternal sleep. The fear of God was said to be so far from the beginning of wisdom that it was the beginning of folly. All the religious worship was prohibited except that of liberty and the country. The constitutional bishop of Paris was brought forward to play the principal part in the most imputed and scandalous farce ever acted in the face of a national representation. He was brought forward in full procession to declare to the convention that the, that the religion which he had taught so many years was in every respect, a piece of pre priestcraft which had no foundation either in history or sacred truth. He disowned in solemn and explicit terms the existence of the deity to whose worship 
he had been consecrated and devoted himself in future to the homage of liberty, equality, virtue, and morality. He then laid on the table his episcopal decorations and received a fraternal embrace from the president of the convention. Several apostate priests followed the, the example of this prelate, and that's from Scott, Volume 1, Chapter 17. Um, speaking of the, like, wisdom and all of that, right, um, Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and so what I get from that is that, like, if you, if you don't fear God, you don't even have knowledge at all, because that is the principle, that's the base of knowledge, you have to fear God in order to be wise. And also, um, at the beginning when they said, um, that they, um, got rid of the Bibles, and they burn them. Atheists today say that they um, actually one time in this bookstore they named the Bible f as fiction, or I what? think it was nonfiction. No, it was fiction. Fiction, fiction, fiction? meaning fake. Yeah. yeah, fiction. Wow. And so, um, like the under the book category. Yeah. Seriously. And they said um, the atheists said that um, they were saying that it's fiction. But they um, also said that they probably shouldn't put a tag on it, just in case. But they're saying that it is fiction. Wow. And you shouldn't believe that that's, in that stuff. Wow. They make yeah. it seem like the Bible is a fairy tale book. I think like that's what they said. You know, um, concerning the two wit witnesses of Revelation, the same two witnesses that we read about, those two witnesses that were, you know, were in sackcloth, right? The two witnesses represent the scriptures of Old and New Testament. Both are important testimonies to the origin and per per perpetuity of the law of God. Both are witnesses also to the plan of salvation. The types, sacrifices, and prophecies of the Old Testament point forward to a Savior to come. The Gospels and Epistles of the New Testament tell of a Savior who has come in the exact manner foretold by type and prophecy. So those, these two witnesses represent the Old and the New Testament. And during the French Revolution, they were really clothed in sack sackcloth. Now, when someone, someone is clothed in sackcloth, sack are they in a happy mood or are they mourning? Sad. They are mourning. So in other words, what the Bible is saying in figurative terms is that the witnesses, the Old Testament, New Testament, they were like mourning, per se, because they were brought down low. You can imagine the Bible being, being, being burnt. And the thing about it is now, at least that's my that's my understanding. They was in um, the 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 Bible uh, or, or the witnesses. They wasn't on it at all. They were the Bible was cast down to the ground. But see, you can imagine this book that people claim that is not true. I mean, how could this book? Um, I mean, just, I mean, like continue. How could this? book, I mean, why someone just don't just say you know what? Let's destroy all the Bibles, you know? And 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 and, and, and the thing about this. They didn't succeed. Even though some person said that, they still didn't succeed. That shows the power of the word of God. God is the author of his word. And when if God if God wants to take it, he can take it away. But he has revealed it to us now. And it's now that we should craft this word. It's now that we should study this word. It's now that we should live by the word that God has given us. But what stands out to me is that the fact that this whole thing is happening again because it says there's nothing new under the sun. And so we see that French Revolution spirit kind of mm -hmm. atheism thing on, uh, coming back again. Mm -hmm. And now um, you have people talking, emphasizing logic, which really isn't logic, but like false science. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I remember in second. Second Timothy, it says, um, talks about oppositions of science, falsely so-called, I, I think. Like, this is basically what we're having today. You know, speaking about um, the Word of God, you know, there are, there are persons who, who say, you know what, Lord, come into my heart. But to be honest with you, God can't come into our hearts. If He come into our hearts physically, we will die. You know how big God is? <laughs> we can't contain Him. But what? why do we always say that, you know, Lord, 
come into my heart. What do we mean? What is it meant by? They probably mean that we want him to dwell within us and we want to be like him. What do you mean by God is inside? How could God be inside our hearts? Well, yes. the Holy Spirit. I, I, I would say he is the thing, the, the first and foremost thing on your mind, like, mm. like nothing else, like whatever you, whatever you like delight in or anything mm -hmm. will be what is the, thing what's the main heart. thought in your mind. And to have God in your heart is to have him to be the one, the, tr the one who is the God of, like God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. He's the God of your, yes. on your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important point you made. Not only, see, when, 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 when. See this conversion thing. When he when he say when he say come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and live in me, and move in me, and um, I want to be more like you and stuff like that. You see the way how God does it is through His Word. You see by by us, uh, I'm um, reading His Word daily, and by us spending time in His Word, His Word. Is then written upon our minds. I don't even by written upon our minds. There we, we begin to dwell mm -hmm. on His word, and when mm -hmm. we begin to dwell on His word, we begin to do His word, and that's what is meant by God come into my heart. Because the Bible says that God is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if God is is the word, when I read the word, when I understand the word, I understand more of God. And this is basically what it, what was in Revelation, where it says his name will be in their foreheads. Ah, basically. his word. Mm -hmm. You know? His, his character. His character. Yes. Exactly. So, when we look at it, it's like, we need, we see the necessity of studying the word of God. Because it's through the word of God, his thoughts is transferred to us. And we be more like him. So, I encourage you all who are listening and all who want to respond to take the word of your word of God as your textbook. And you said something very important, Matthew, that we should have him on our minds, you know, inside our hearts. That's by having his word, our his word, our daily contemplation. You know, what would God have for me to do? What does God want me to do? And um. And like in Romans chapter 1 verse 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Like a good example of a historical figure would be Adoniran Judson. And he entertained the most extravagant ambitions and his imagination ran wild. As he contemplated his future eminence, he pictured himself as an orator greater than Demosthenes, swaying the multitudes with his eloquence. As a second Homer, writing in more immortal poems as a second Alexander the Great, weeping because there were no more worlds to conquer. In First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, some are given the gift of wisdom and take that power, and they take that power, responsible, ability against God. Spurgeon once said, human wisdom has been a greater curse to church than anything else. But um, one more point, right, is that this was the way it was supposed to be. And from the beginning, we were supposed to live to God and... By his word? Yeah. So I encourage you all to study and to live the word of God. And I want to close up with this, with the same quote that I said from Desire of Ages, which was in page 307. Um, the topic was, what is the true light? True character is not shaped from without and put on. It radiates from within. If we wish to direct others in the path of righteousness, the principles of righteousness must be enshrined in our own hearts. Our profession of faith may proclaim the theory of religion, but it is our principal piety that holds forth the word of truth. The consistent mm -hmm. life, the holy conversation, the unswerving integrity... And the active, benevolent spirit, the godly examples, these are the mediums through which light is conveyed to the world. And Pete is going to give us our 
closing text of the week. The memory verse of the week comes from John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Stop for a moment, please just be still, you are an heir of his will. If you believe when you pray, and you pray in Jesus' name, the prayer that you pray, the prayer that you pray, the prayer that you pray, the answer's on its way, the answer's on its way. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here to another show. Please help us to um, help the atheists in the world to be good people and to help them to become righteous in your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.